first here. Polygon selected to participate in Disney's 2022 Accelerator Program. Polygon has been selected as a participant in Disney's 2022 Accelerator Program to continue building on Polygon's Web3 technology. The program will commence this week and is focused on augmented reality, non-fungible tokens, and artificial intelligence, according to a statement from the Walt Disney Company. Polygon CEO Ryan Watt noted that Polygon was in a strong position, having been selected as the only blockchain for Disney's prestigious accelerator program, and being selected illustrates the high-quality work being done at Polygon and the company's promising future. The application process for the accelerator program started on April 22nd and ended on May 13th, 2022. Disney stated that they were looking for growth stage companies with a vision for making an impact on the future of technology and entertainment. Disney's Accelerator program was first launched in 2014. The program provides mentorship from the Disney Accelerator team and guidance from Disney's leadership team. The participants of the Accelerator program will be given extra investment capital and access to co-working space at Walt Disney's Los Angeles campus. The program will end with a demo day on campus. In the past 24 hours, the value of Polygon's Matic token has increased by 16%. This is in response to recent news developments. So that's pretty cool. If you like um, Polygon, this is definitely something good news for you. Maybe something to look into investing if you haven't already. Up next here, CryptoPunk sells for $2.6 million as big NFT brands floor prices increase. A single CryptoPunk has sold for an astonishing 2,500 Ether equivalent to a price tag of over $2.6 million. This is despite a significant decrease in trading volume across the broader NFT market. The transaction of $2.6 million makes the sale of CryptoPunk 4464 the largest in the last 30 days across the NFT market. When taking into account the sale price in Ether, this punk is now the fourth most valuable sale of all time for the collection. However, due to the recent decline in the value of ETH, the dollar value of NFTs has also decreased significantly. In terms of United States dollars, this is still the 15th most valuable crypto punk sale to date. Contrary to the negative sentiment around NFTs, the floor prices of the top collections have been increasing in recent weeks. The floor price of the CryptoPunk project has grown by more than 65% in the last 30 days, while the average floor price for Board Ape Yacht Club BAYC has increased by 21%. Mutant Ape Yacht Club has seen its floor price grow by 25%. According to the recent sale, it is evident that even though the average floor prices and volume of the NFT market have decreased significantly, the most popular projects are still receiving significant attention. Up next here, U.S. Senate confirms Michael Barr as Fed Vice Chair for Supervision. In a vote of 66 to 28 on the Senate floor, Michael Barr was confirmed as Vice Chair for Supervision of the Federal Reserve System for four years, filling the last seat on the seven-member Board of Governors. Barr, who served on the advisory board of Ripple Labs from 2015 to 2017, also served as the Treasury Department's Assistant Secretary for Financial Institutions under former President Barack Obama and taught courses on financial regulation at the University of Michigan. As Vice Chair for Supervision, Barr will be responsible for developing policy recommendations for the Federal Reserve, as well as overseeing the supervision and regulation of certain financial institutions. According to the White House, he was a key architect of the 2010 Dodd-Frank Act, legislation that continues to influence financial policy in the United States, and set up the position of vice chair for supervision. In his confirmation hearing before the Senate Banking Committee in May, Barr said that while innovative technologies like cryptocurrencies had the potential to bring economic benefits, they also carried significant risks. He called on lawmakers to create a regulatory framework on stablecoins to prevent the risk of runs. The Federal Reserve, in conjunction with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, oversees a majority of the regulations surrounding digital assets and financial, in financial institutions within the United States. With Barr taking his position, there will now be seven seated members on the Fed's Board of Governors, an event that has not occurred in the last 10 years. So hopefully this is a positive thing for crypto, having someone from Ripple on that board. Only time will tell. Up next here, we have some breaking news. Celsius reportedly filing for bankruptcy imminently. Celsius, a crypto lending platform, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and has begun notifying individual United States state regulators. CNBC reported that an unnamed source said the company planned to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection imminently. The source asked to remain anonymous as the proceedings are private. This change comes shortly after the controversial lending platform replaced its law firm, Akin Gump, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld LLP with Kirkland and Ellis LLP. This is the same firm that assisted Voyager Digital with its bankruptcy filing last week. 
Earlier in the day, Celsius closed off the last of its decentralized finance debts owed to Compound, Aave, and Maker. This reduced its initial debt of $820 million to just 0.013 over the course of a month. The fate of depositors who have their assets locked up on the lending platform is still unknown. The company or its CEO, Alex Mashinsky, has not made any public comments about whether depositors will receive any percentage of their funds back. The Vermont Department of Financial Regulation, a DFR, issued a warning to consumers about the crypto lending firm. The DFR reminded consumers that the firm is not licensed to offer its services in the state. The DFR expressed concerns that the company was facing significant financial difficulties and accused them of misusing customer funds. They stated that the company was insolvent and did not have the assets or liquidity to meet its obligations to customers. Celsius was forced to halt withdrawals on June 13th due to extreme market conditions. Rumors of the crypto lender's insolvency have circulated since then. Very unfortunate. You know, my condolences to anyone who has funds locked up in Celsius. I know a lot of people do, and I'm still hoping that everyone gets their money back. It's not looking like it at this point. Up next here, OKX to extend offers in Dubai after securing a provisional license. Crypto exchange OKX has acquired a provisional virtual assets license from the Dubai Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority, or VARA. This allows them to offer additional services to qualified investors and financial services providers in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. In a statement, the OKX team said that the license allows them to extend their products and services to users in the region. The team also noted that regulatory compliance is a priority for them as it helps to protect users. According to Tim Byun, government relations officer at OK Group, the compliance framework given by Dubai's VARA reflects UAE's leadership in nurturing the future's global economy. Byun explained that Dubai is a pioneer in the regulation of the virtual asset sector and is swiftly becoming one of the top global hubs for the industry. Lennox Lai, an executive at OKX, stated that their team is looking forward to contributing to the local ecosystem and exchanging ideas, which will be crucial for the crypto space. In line with this, the exchange will also establish a regional hub in Dubai and construct its team and infrastructure within the country. And last but not least here, Tencent shuts down NFT platform as government policy makes it impossible to thrive. The internet giant Tencent has reportedly shut down one of the two non-fungible token platforms in China due to declining sales. This is likely due to the Chinese government's aggressive monetary policies. Tencent has shut down one of its NFT platforms with the other one struggling to remain afloat. A report indicates that the wind down process began in May. The tech giant transferred key executives responsible for managing the NFT platform in the last week of May and completely removed the digital collectible section from its Tencent news app by the first week of July. The slow sales and eventual closure of Tencent's digital collectible platform are mainly due to flawed government policy that prohibits buyers from selling their NFTs and private transactions after purchase. This lack of a secondary market eliminates any potential for profit on these digital collectibles. The Chinese government has not imposed an outright ban on NFTs, but big businesses and tech giants are still exercising caution due to the potential for strict actions from the Beijing government. According to Wu Blockchain, a China-based Twitter handle, NFTs are still being sold on underground secondary markets, but larger tech firms such as Alibaba and Tencent cannot afford to do so. Despite a ban on crypto trading, mining, and the subsequent warning against NFTs, Chinese traders have always managed to bypass strict regulatory crackdowns. For example, after the crypto mining ban in the country last year, China's share of Bitcoin miners dropped to zero from 60%. However, recent data suggests that China has climbed back to the second spot again, indicating miners have found a way to continue despite the strict measures taken by the government. Similarly, the number of NFT platforms in the country grew five times in four months. So I know we continue to update you guys on crypto regulation. China is a huge one. Things have been all over the place. So We'll continue to keep you guys updated on that. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment on what you want to see in a future video, and we'll see you next time.